and welcome to another big year of boxing right here on KO and what a great start to the year we've had. In what can only be described as a massive upset, Shane Mosley has been beaten and with Jeff in Florida for Glenn Kelly's showdown with Roy Jones, I'm joined by Paul Upham and Paul, I think I'm still recovering from the result. It was a huge upset, Matthew, probably one of the sport's biggest upsets since uh, Tyson's lock lost to Buster Douglas and Vernon Forrest, he was just so impressive and so dominant, he made Sh uh, Sugar Shane made he look like very, uh, just an ordinary fighter. Yeah, he certainly did. Well, let's now take a look at highlights of Forrest's extraordinary victory over Mosley. Shane Mosley in the red, white, and blue. With his trunks and Vernon Forrest on the outside, the right of your screen in the black. And interesting that between rounds of Mosley Corner saying, you know what, the right hand, he'll oh, feel it, but right now they feel a headbutt. Nasty clash of the heads. You're cut. Damn. You're cut. Fuck. Accidental This will be accidental, accidental headbutt, headbutt noted here by Steve Smoger. I'm Good sure. right hand by Vernon Forrest. One of the better shots that Mosley has had to take. Another good right hand by Forrest. And Mosley having some trouble seeing him. Mosley, Mosley down! down! Forrest on top of him. What shots here by Vernon Forrest. Tremendous shots. And he should go for it soon. He should go for the knockout soon because Mosley's corner will want the technical draw if they can get it. Mosley's never been in trouble before, and this is something he's never done. This is uncharted waters for Mosley. And never been hurt. He doesn't know what to do. Top of him here. Forrest knows he's had Mosley beat, even if it was a long time ago. The gloves are tapping. Forrest with a right hand, big hook to the body. Vernon Forrest trying to pull off a good upset here. Mosley trying to fight back, but Forrest loading up. Good right hands, and you just know if Mosley gets through this, his corner will try for this technical draw. So Forrest is opening it up, and Mosley in trouble again. He is on weak legs and down. And that could be the best thing that happened to him is to go down at that point. And you can't He's be up. saved by the bell here, Dave. Six, seven. And he made the count. But you can't be saved now. Let's see what we get from Mosley's corner. They have to try for this technical draw, I think. If they can get it. Excuse me, excuse me. Now the cut's not so bad. Dave, the cut is in no place. You doing all right? You got popped a few times. You doing okay? The hand, the butt line, okay? The hand, but yeah. But, but Shane, you got to hold your hands up. And Forrest unloading in that round. Watch this right hand up. Beauty behind the jab. And then he just kept up the pressure. And then you're going to see a sight you never thought you'd see. And that's Shane Mosley hitting the canvas. Uppercuts. Never before in his career. We're not talking about somebody that had ever been down before, had ever been cut, had ever been in even this close is the to trouble. Knockdown in round one. Hey, you take a look. Huge shots there. Mosley down. Two knockdowns in the opening round. Actually, round two. As far as coming on. And I can tell by that body combination that Mosley just threw that he's got his legs back underneath him. Yeah, and then a good uppercut there by Forrest, driving Mosley back again. So Mosley comes back, shows he's okay, and Forrest wants to tell him that he's not okay. So he keeps on coming at him. Good ebb and flow in this match and in this round. How does he solve this guy? Not by going southpaw like that. Well, that's his way of saying he's confused, but there's a right hand by Mosley and a right hand back by Forrest. So it opened up for a bit. Bow, bow, bow. And you know, there's always the talk in boxing. Well, you know, the corner is sneaky. They find ways to see what the scorecards are. That would not be evidence of it there as Mosley coming on and trying to take the play away from Forrest. Vernon Forrest, dogged and determined. Trying to hang on to this would-be upset of boxing's top pound-for-pound king. But there's not a lot of pop on the shots. Nice right hand lands, though, for Mosley. Forrest tries the right hand lead against the South Pole, and Mosley goes that way. Forrest still has some bullets in his gun, 
And he fires a good hook to the body. And Forrest, another big shot, and Mosley in trouble again. As Forrest outpunched him when Mosley wanted to engage him. Decisive edge with these body shots here by Vernon Forrest. Oh, Mosley in big trouble. Smoker taking a hard look at him. Vernon Forrest almost making Mosley crumple up like an accordion. Some tremendous body shots. These left hooks by Forrest have been prominent. Well, Tommy Kazmarek scores the belt. 115 to 110. Melvina Lathan scores it 117 to 108. And Julie Letterman scores it 118 to 108. All for the winner by unanimous decision. The undefeated true welterweight champion of the world, Bernard Again, why do you have Shane Mosley's number, even 10 years later? See, people think that uh, speed is everything. But I know how to fight speed. You know, a jab stops speed. Really, young fighters out there, anytime you find a guy with extremely fast hands, just use your jab. That's all it takes. It's the jab that beats speed. But it was those long right hands, the kind of punches that he is usually able to evade. Why were they landing so well? I got a radar on it. I, in camp, I got it down pat. I reworked it. I re worked out the mechanics on it. I had a radar tonight. It was a, it was a heat sinking missile and I was cracking it with it. Well, it was simply an amazing victory. And the other thing, Paul, I couldn't believe how average Mosley looked. He looked terrible. I think he suffered from those knockdowns and maybe the head clash as well, Matthew. Uh, we don't know what effect that had on him. But I think Vernon Forrest, the key for him was he went into the fight very confident, having beaten him as an amateur. And he used his height and his reach advantage. And he really did out jab uh, Shane Mosley, as he said. But surely if Mosley is as good as everybody says he is, he should have been able to recover from the head clash and from the knockdowns and, and come on and enforce his will on the fight. I, obviously, he wasn't as good as everybody thought he was. Well, that's the point that's now being made, Matthew, but I still think that those knockdowns affected him. He wasn't the sugar shame Maisie we've seen before, and he, was, he took some really hard shots, some devastating punches from Forrest, and I think that uh, played a big part in, in Forrest winning because Mosley just couldn't come back. And we've also seen in the past that Mosley can be hit. We even saw against Shannon Taylor, who took a terrible pounding from him, that in the third round of that fight he was able to land some good punches on him. But Forrest had the perfect game plan, and he used his physical advantages. He just took the advantage from the second round and I don't think Shane had the opportunity to land any really good punches because Vernon Forrest trained really hard for this fight. No one tipped him to win. He went as a huge underdog. It was a tremendous upset even though he was an undefeated world champion himself. He seemed to, he seemed to do it so easily too and he talked there about the jab as if it was that simple that all you had to do was throw the jab to negate the speed but uh, he went in there with such a good game plan. Early on he, he attacked and then in the middle rounds when he himself probably got a little bit tired and he wanted to frustrate straight Mosley he was able to hold on. Also you can probably say that maybe Shane Mosley was looking past Vernon Forrest looking to bigger fights he's talking about fighting Oscar De La Hoya again Felix Trinidad possibly even Bernard Hopkins so maybe it was another case of a good fighter overlooking another good fighter. And what about the rematch of course there would have been a rematch clause I would say in the contract I guess Mosley he has to completely change his outlook on the fight because he got so thoroughly beaten in this fight. There'll definitely be a rematch later this year. It's going to be a huge fight now, even bigger. And Shane Mosley needs a huge win. And also, I was very disappointed with his corner, Matthew. I thought his father, Jack Mosley and Cassius Green, Green didn't give him the direction that he needed. At some stage, he had to be told, son, you need a knockout to win. Yeah, that was definitely true. Well, the undercard featured some terrific matchups in an action-packed light welterweight clash. Arturo Gatti faced former world champ Terra Millett in what was an important fight for both men. Here are the highlights. But that's another endearing quality of his. Uh, he, he knows what is said about the lack of defense and plays into it. He's acknowledging it. A little pawing behind the head right there from Millet, too. Millet starting to get frustrated. Good right hand by Gotti. Now you see guys trying to hold up when their reach is off and they can't seem to get inside. And Millet is the body shot unbalanced here. His body comes in. Millette is disorganized. The body shot really hurt. Millette took his legs away. And, and to his credit, Dr. William Lathan in, in Millette's corner between rounds taking a long look. Didn't leave. Stayed there the entire 60 seconds watching over him. Good shots here by Gotti up on top. Millette took them. Big shot oh, by Oh, that's it. This Gotti fight's over. A huge right hand. 
Boy, the left hook gets him, and then the right hand gets Five, him. Millet gets six, up, but seven, he's got to stop this fight. Eyes. He's going to stop the fight. He's going to make him walk to him. Millet passes that test. That's a mistake. Here Big comes mistake, Gotti. Dave. This fight should be stopped. Santa right on top. Next big shot, he may do it, but Gotti is there. Big shots here. It Millet. shouldn't have gone this long. He should not have allowed that knockdown to happen with the head going down. Well, Big it's mistake over now. here. It's over now. It may be more than over. Teron Millet went down very heavy there with his head hitting. Jim Santa should have stopped it after that first knockdown in this round. Well, an important win there too, Gaddy and uh, Paul. He really is one of the, the great survivors of the sport, isn't he? And I think it's his crowd-pleasing style. He is a crowd favourite, Matthew. And I think better suited to junior welterweight and also a new trainer, Buddy McGirt, which I think made a big difference as well in that fight. And there are some good matchups for him. They had actually mentioned at one stage that he might fight Costa Zou, but uh, you seem to think that might not happen this year. I think Costa's got a full card this year already. I think what they'll try and do is match Arturo Gatti with Mickey Ward, another exciting fighter, or Jesse James Leha. And then if uh, Gatti proves himself, well, then maybe early in uh, 2000, and three a possible matchup with Costa. Also on the card, Takumbu Olajide is a fighter to watch. The super welterweight packs a whack as Marvin Smith discovered during their brief encounter. Second round action between Takumbu Olajide and Marvin Smith. Olajide in the black trunks. And Arnie, it was interesting between rounds. You know, you see lecturing a lot, but in the corner of Olajide, it looked like a discussion. A mutual discussion between Elijah and Tommy Gallagher. No urgency at all. They have a, I've, I've watched them work together before. They're very close. Uh, they communicate on a different plane together. And, and a very calm fellow, very bright uh, to combo Elijah Day. Also a musician, thinks in terms of clarity. And Tommy Gallagher and he just hit it right off. Body shot by Elijah Day. Now, what do you think of guys standing between rounds and not utilizing the stool? I'm seeing more and more of that, you know, and a lot of people picked that up from George Foreman during Foreman's comeback where George didn't like to sit between rounds. I don't see any upside to it. Why not take that pressure off your legs and also give you a place to rest your hands, which traditionally you want to rest on your legs. You get the breathing, it's all uh, in there for that minute. Now Smith trying to use the four-inch reach advantage. Elijah Day trying to deny him that chance. Land some good body shots here. Lajade very careful. No sense of gambling here by him. And very careful. Oh! Big shot by Lajade. What a hook. It's over, it's Mike Ortega. Wow. And a very good stoppage, Dave, on the part of Mike Ortega. Not yeah. wasting time counting because he sees Marvin Smith in a lot of trouble. And there's already three doctors over him. Well, you know what? They'd just be reaching the count now. So that's eight or nine seconds more. Three doctors had a chance to go in there and get right on top of the fighter. You saw a right hand come up short and then that hook coming out of nowhere. And, you know, he didn't really show it until then. That is tremendous patience to hold back your trump card until a spot like that. And Olajide is obviously a fighter to watch. And Smith was taken to hospital, but later released with nothing more than a sore head. And just ahead on KO, we chat with Glenn Kelly. Stay with us.